Hello everybody, thank you for watching this video. I'm gonna talk about uh, the Weaviate Vector Search Engine and then uh, specifically from the perspective of uh, threat analysis in cybersecurity. Um, mostly we're gonna focusing on, I'm gonna uh, tell a little bit about what Weaviate is and then we're gonna focus on the demo. Um, and I'm also gonna show, give you some pointers how you can start working with Weaviate yourself. So Weaviate is a, a vector search engine, and um, it's a it's a full uh, cross support database. But the most important thing to bear in mind is that the um, the difference between uh, traditional search engines and vector search engines like Weaviate is that Weaviate focuses on the vector representation of the data uh, that is stored within it. And those vector representations are given to it based on machine learning models. And the simplest way to show you the difference between a traditional search engine and a vector search engine is the following. So uh, let's look at this data object. Uh, so we have here a data object representing a, in this case, uh, cybersecurity threat group. So we have here FIN6. And then you see like a group that has focused on an attacking point of sales devices. Well, if we would store this data object in a traditional search engine and we want to retrieve it, and then we say, for example, we are looking for something related to uh, finance hardware attacks, then it will not find anything because we know that Fin6 is related to these, uh, this query, but, well, the, um, uh, the exact keywords are not matched in this uh, data object. However, when you do this in a vector search engine like Weaviate, it will actually return FIN6 because it knows that there's a relation between finance, hardware, and attack uh, based on a, uh, a group that focuses on attacking point of sales devices. And that is the most important added value of these vector search engines like Weaviate. And as you will see in the demo, a lot of new use cases come from this. So when it comes to the cybersecurity domain, our main focus or our main question that we want to answer is like, can we go from like a rule-based approach to a prediction-based approach? Um, and then of course we uh, want to do that based on your own data. So again, we have this database and and in the and and of the type of a, a search engine. So that means that you can use any data. Um, uh, to store in Weaviate, so it can also be your own data, that can be your proprietary data, um, that doesn't really matter. Uh, and then of course we focus on um, uh, enabling you to have an, an, an easy and fast and secure way um, uh, to, to work with that data, as you will see in the demo as well. So quickly to a definition of Weaviate, uh, so Weaviate is cloud native. What we mean with that is that uh, if you have Kubernetes or more on a local instance, if you have Docker Compose, you can you can work with uh, with Weaviate. Um, it's modular, and and that's one of our uh, the, the, uh, what makes unique uh, Weaviate unique is the its modular nature. So the Weaviate core um, is a pure vector database where you can store data objects and their vector representations. But we have a whole set of modules around Weaviate. Um, like NLP models, question answering model um, modules, vectorization modules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and during the demo, I'm going to show with you with two modules: um, the um, vectorization module and the question answering module. Um, we focus with VV8 on being as real time as possible. So we're constantly working on improving um, uh, VV8 and. Uh, uh, the, the speed of the algorithms to, to do the vector retrievals. Uh, it's a vector search engine, so what makes it different from traditional search engines is that rather than doing keyword matching, uh, we focus on uh, vector uh, matching, and it's built to scale your machine learning models. Why? What do we mean with this? Well, what we mean with this is that um, having uh, machine learning modules is one thing, oh, sorry, models is one thing, but also using them in an efficient way and scaling them to production sizes, that's a completely different question. So um, a little bit about the core features. So we've got two core features. The first one is search, or as we like to say, search and discovery in your data. So the demo that I'm going to show you is completely focusing on search and how to find things using Weaviate. 
but on the other hand we also have classification and the easiest way to think of classification is context is that we v8 can automatically make relations in your data sets so where search there is some form of human or machine input to get to insights with classification you can ask we v8 to do that automatically uh, then we have uh, some other um, uh, well unique features from we v8 so first uh, the modules as i just described um, uh, we have a bunch of them. If you have ideas for modules, we're more than um, uh, happy to hear um, um, you know, how you think we can uh, improve VVA's module ecosystem. By the way, you can also create your own uh, modules. Then we support any media type. So VVA, uh, not only the vector representations that VVA can store, but also the data objects can be of any media type. So within one single VVA, you can store uh, textual uh, text objects and text uh, vec uh, vectors to represent these data objects, but also, for example, images or video. Reviate itself has a graph like um, a data model. So, what you will see when I show the demo to you, we use GraphQL. Uh, GraphQL is used to um, um, not only do the uh, uh, machine learning matching, but also to make traditional graph relations and most importantly to mix and match them and then of course we focus on wv8 being scalable and fast and we're constantly updating and improving wv8 so with every release wv8 is a bit more uh, a bit more faster and a bit more scalable so when it comes to the um uh, the vertical of cybersecurity, um uh, we mostly focus on intelligent threat analysis um, and meaning that we we get focuses on structured data, so that can be descriptions, text documents, or those kind of things that are related to um, uh, uh, threat analysis. So for this demo, we're using the Mitra Tech uh, framework uh, for the simple reason that it contains a lot of graph relations, but also a lot of unstructured data. Um, we use a Weaver Transformers module. Uh, uh, which is fine-tuned fine -tuned with cybersecurity data. Uh, in this case, we use SentenceBird, uh, and that brings me to the demo. So before I show you the demo, I quickly want to show the documentation. So if we just uh, simply search for Reviate documentation, um, um, you find it on our website, semi.technology. Um, on the left hand side you find um, uh, a lot of information with a lot of kind of features uh, also the the index uh, plugins and the modules what I would like to recommend is that if you go to installation you find the customize your Weaviate setup link uh, where you can very easily go to the uh, configurator to configure your own uh, Weaviate instance um, if you want to query Weaviate, we have GraphQL interfaces. So, uh, for example, GET, where you see examples in GraphQL, Python, JavaScript, Go, etc., and even in curl. Um, and you can also try out the test uh, data set there. So, when we are in the Weaviate console, um, we get an interface where we can use GraphQL to query through Weaviate. And the um, Setup how we it works is actually very simple. So um, we it has three core functions meaning that's aggregate That is explore and that is get and uh, Aggregate is used to uh, well get an as an aggregate function. So for example, how many objects do are stored in we Explore is used to search through the complete vector space, but get is used to make a mix of uh, vector searches and graph searches and that's what we're going to use for the demo inside we you have a um, uh, graph like data model so that means that you can create any class and any property so in this case our class and property structure is based on the meter attack framework so let's take a look at the first one so let's take a look at threat groups so threat groups have a, a name and this very simple query says like get me thread groups and show them show me their names so running this query you see a bunch of thread groups they're not organized in any way they're just randomly shown based on this uh, query um, we can also go uh, add properties so we can say for example say like uh, show the description 
and now you see for example I have copy kittens and you see the the description of the the thread group so let's go one step back now what we now can do is that we can enable the machine learning model and in this we've had instance we have two modules enabled the factorization module and the q a module so let's start by looking at the from the perspective of the q a module so what we can do is that we can say well we want to ask a question then of course we have the question and um, the question that we want to ask is who targeted the government in the middle east make an array that's incorrect should like do it like this we can set the properties that we want to search through and that is something we want to do based on the uh, descriptions and then we have so-called underscore properties additional or we can say well this is where we want to see the answer to the question and we want to see the result so very simple question a query where we say based on these thread groups search through the descriptions and show us who targeted the government in the Middle East. So let's run this query. So here we'll find the answer oral rig. Um, what we now can do with uh, Weaviate is that we can say like, well, for example, also include the name of this thread, the description of this thread group. And then you see that the name is actually also oral rig. Uh, but if you're also gonna look at um, uh, the description, uh, then we see that actually inside the description there's more information about uh, oil rig. And one of the things that I want to show you is that we can even drill down in the descriptions because we can say like um, we can alternate alter the question to ask for example under what name was oil rig also known. Oh, like this. So let me remove the description temporarily. So if I now run this query, then we see that in the in the document about Ulrich, we, we, we learn that apt34 is also a way how Ulrich is uh, called. So let's go one step deeper. So let's say like, uh, what kind of attacks does Ulrich use? This query. And we find that in the document about Ulrich, the answer is found, which is supply chain attacks. Um, we've now been looking at the graph from the level of the thread group. So let's take a completely different approach and use the supply chain attacks in there. So let's start from the perspective of the attack technique. And so if you now also say, uh, have this simple query where we say get attack techniques and show me the names. And if we run this query, we just get a bunch of attack techniques coming from the Mitra attack framework. Now when we get, we can do question answering, but we can also do a, a, a near search. So we can also uh, search for neighboring concepts. So let's say, for example, here we have a near text and we're going to look for concepts. And then for the concepts, let's look at the supply chain attacks. And let's say for this query, limit that to the first 10 results. So if I now run these queries, then with supply chain attacks, then the most neighboring concepts are, of course, well, the supply chain compromise, the supply chain compromise, or the compromise in hardware supply chain, etc. Now the question is like, how does Weaviate know what to show? What is the certainty that Weaviate has in showing these results? Well, to, to get some feedback there, we can actually ask Weaviate to show us the certainty. So if you run this query, then we see the certainty um, uh, based on which we've yet organized the results and the certainty is the, related to the distance from the query to the data object. So that's why we've yet says like, okay, supply chain compromises to come first for supply chain attacks, etc. So what we see here as well, that if we dive under 80% of certainty, we kind of lose let more and more context based on the query that we have. So instead of limiting this query, we can actually say, well, we want to be at least 80% certain based on the results that we've is showing based on supply chain attacks. Now, of course, this shows just single classes and single nodes in the results. But let's say that if we talk about supply chain attacks, um, 
how can we actually mitigate these attacks? And here we can make actually a graph relation. So we can say, uh, oh, not known attacks, but known mitigations. So we can say on mitigation, show the name of the mitigation, and let's remove the certainty. So running this query says that for a su supply chain compromise, uh, you, 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 have a, um, you can update software or you can do vulnerability, uh, vulnerability scanning. And, and when it comes to uh, 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 comprising hardware supply chain, you can do a boot integrity. So this is a simple example how you see we can mix the machine learning model searching and the traditional graph relations. But we can also go one step further. So for example, what do we need to do um, if something happened uh, in, our, in our data landscape and or in a software landscape and we want to solve that problem? So just let's be very uh, descriptive and let's ask a, um, a, a solution to a simple set of concepts that we're going to ask from BV8 that somehow should be hidden in the Mitra, in Mitra's attack framework. So a port was opened at the host's firewall. So same query, but we're now going to say, well, inside the attack, uh, the attack they somehow opened uh, 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 they opened a port at the host's firewall we want to be at least 80 percent certain and we want immediately shown shown what the known mitigations are for these solutions and we want to uh, see names for these types of attacks so what we see here is that uh, opening a port on the host's firewall is known as traffic signaling or port knocking and we see that the, mit the known mitigation uh, is always to filter the network traffic. We can even go a step further. So if we say, well, um, so what is it actually that we need to do? Then we can also ask for the description of this mitigation. And then you see that it twice shows the same uh, mitigation. Um, so we know what we need to do to solve this problem. So that is the basic demo from the Mitra Tech Framework within um, uh, Weaviate. There are a few more things that I want to share with you before I end this presentation. Uh, one is that I want to re-emphasize that Weaviate um, runs like a normal database on-prem or in the private cloud or in the private public cloud or even in the public cloud. Um, we have custom security NLP models. We have a custom WeaveJet module that deals with the cybersecurity models themselves. WeaveJet comes with direct API integration. So as you have seen from the demo and from the documentation, um, we have a set of client libraries which we are constantly updating and improving. And then you also have the graph representations of frameworks like, for example, the Mitra attack framework. I would like to emphasize that Mitra was in this demo just an example. You can use any structure, any framework, or any schema that you would like to use within Weaviate uh, for your needs. So thank you very much for listening. My name is Bob van Luyt. Feel free to reach out to me on bob at semi.technology if you want to learn more about how Weaviate can help um, in your domain or with your um, the challenges that you have. Uh, on semi.technology, you can also find our open core software so you can play around with it, you can try it out. So I'm looking very much forward to hearing from you and hopefully we can help you uh, taking the next step in uh, intelligent threat analysis. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.